this privilege of being in the house of God today. We're living in some times when people can't get together like they want to, ought to, but we're doing our best to uh, do what we need to do to go ahead and meet and to honor and glorify you. We pray that you'll bless this service, bless every part of it, bless everybody that's here. We pray that you'll even, that you will now bless the service to follow when we have the memorial service at one o'clock mm -hmm. uh, for Seuss. And we just thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, you may be seated. It's good to see everybody here. I know we have one brand new one back there, but this being the time which we live, you know, we, we'll just, I'll let, can I ask you what your name is? Sure, my name is a Hugh. Last name, I want a key. You like to open the door. I want a key. We just moved down here a couple weeks ago, and uh, well, we just closed our house a couple weeks ago, and we're very excited. So. Great. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Glad to have you. Glad to be here. Hey, man. You like chicken? <laughs> <laughs> we're serving. Yeah. We're serving lunch, and we got a hundred pieces of chicken. <laughs> And don't forget, now, I know that this is the most important service of all, but uh, the next one's very important, too, and that's our memorial service for Seuss Adams. That's Brother Tony's wife. She passed away this week, and uh, she's at home with the Lord. Amen. And uh, she's not here. That's right. And, uh, but we're going to have a memorial service for her, and, and uh, we're going to put it on Facebook, and it'll be seen across the nation by people who have, many of them have requested it. All of our northern people have requested it. So mm. it'll be on there for them. And don't forget, we won't have a night service tonight. This is this one o'clock service is taking the place of our night service. We just moved it up. We were gonna have it at six and the family wanted us to move it up, so we did. And so we're gonna have it at one. So we'll eat lunch uh, at about 12, 12.30 when we get it all ready. And then at 1 o'clock, we'll be back in here, and I hope all of you will stay. We'll be back in here for the memorial service. And uh, we're, gonna, we're going to put it on Facebook. Our last service, just to show you, I forgot now, but it was like 700. 700. Over 700 people saw our last service, uh, which was when we, the trio sang. Uh, I, I think it was last Sunday, wasn't it? Sunday yeah, we night. aired it on, on Wednesday, night. yeah. <clears throat> so uh, that was a blessing. You know, we're reaching people across the country and even in the foreign countries. I hear from people in foreign countries and they, they're listening to the program. And uh, so then we'll be back here Wednesday night at 6.30. So uh, come if you can because uh, we, we study the Bible on Wednesday night. We go chapter by chapter and verse by verse as we do in Bible study on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. 
And when you miss a Bible study, you really miss something because we really dig into the scriptures and find out exactly what it says. And it's really a, if you don't come to the service, you ought to at least get the outline and try to go over it yourself. And, and you'll see some things that you probably just passed over if you're not careful. But it's great to have everybody here and we're so thankful for you. And uh, we appreciate everyone that comes to the house of God. Uh, and we missed you last Sunday. Remember last Sunday? We were supposed to have that hurricane. Oops. We didn't have but 12 here. <laughs> but we did have 12 of us. We went ahead and had church. We sure did. We had 13 Sunday night, though, which was really a, a blessing. But so be faithful if you, if you possibly can. Be in the house of the Lord. And pray for one another. And since we won't have a prayer service tonight, uh, we want to have prayer especially for uh, Annelle's sister, Amelia, which is actually uh, Barbara's cousin. Her husband passed away this week himself. His name, we call him Bit. And uh, he passed away. And uh, we want to remember that family in prayer. And also, we've got a special need down here where there's an HOA. We're going to pray for God to take care of the situation there. So let's pray right now for that. Our Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus, our precious Savior. You know that there are lots of needs that we don't even know about, but we do know about these two. And I pray that you will bless the family a bit, Amelia. And I pray that you will take care of this situation that's down here in this HOA uh, down the road a piece make make everything right do whatever needs to be done Lord to uh, stay take care of that situation be with brother Tony and his family and the loss of Seuss and even be with all of us because we've lost a wonderful friend mm -hmm. and she's gone on to be with you and we're so thankful for that and she's not suffering anymore we pray that you'll bless each one of us, draw us close to you, cleanse us from our sin, and we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to sing another one now. All right. Number 55, uh, when the roll is called up yonder. Mm, good one. You know, when, it, when in a Baptist church, we always receive an offering, but we do it as an act of worship to the Lord. Uh, we, we don't just give money, but we say, Lord, uh, we're going to give a portion back to you of what you have given us. 
And we do it because we love you and we honor you and we praise your holy name. And every time that you give to the Lord, uh, you can't really outgive him because he uh, is able to give more abundantly than you could ever think of. So the Bible even says that uh, when we give to him, he will open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we wouldn't even be able to contain. You know what I mean? And so that's, that's, the, that's the best part of it. And uh, that's why he said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And so it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. So uh, I'm going to ask Roberto to come. and He's going to uh, say our prayer and then pass the plate around. If you have your tithe and your offerings ready, we're going to ask you to give it to the Lord right now. Would you pray? Yes, sir. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thankful, Lord. We're thankful for how good you are to us, Lord, in spite of everything that is going on around us, Father. We thank you, Lord, also for all of us that are here and for those that are uh, watching, Lord, from far away, that they can gather with us even though they're far. And God, we just pray especially now for this time that we get to bring back to you a portion of that goodness, uh, back to you in, uh, in an offering, Lord, uh, to you, Father. We pray that you bless the service, Lord, and uh, bless everything that we'll do today, and may it all be for your honor and glory, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. The time has come to give thanks to Almighty God, the one whose gifts hold in power. Give him thanks for the love he showed us, and giving us salvation through his Son. Jesus Christ, give him thanks for Sunday, meeting him in glory, give him thanks for meeting every need, give him honor by singing, glory to his name, in all things give thanks to the Lord, in all things give thanks to the Lord. Thank 
sound and praise our God. Jesus is our King. We will live forever on the streets of gold. If He takes me home tomorrow, I am ready to go. No more pain or sorrow. with Jesus on the streets of gold. There'll be no more darkness and no more night. I will spend my time with Jesus on the streets of gold. I will spend my time with Jesus on the streets of job on that one of course he just wrote that one week ago last friday so that was a brand new song beautiful and it is beautiful, beautiful. one day we're going to walk on those streets right. of gold right. no doubt about it we'll either have jesus come and get us or we'll have him come and get us all at the same time but one of these days we're going to be on those streets of gold Amen. i want to bring a message today on strengthen that which remains and that's a phrase in Revelation chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 2. And uh, this was a letter to the church uh, that uh, the Lord was writing to the church at Sardis. And there was a lot of things that were going wrong with the church, but there was a few things that remained. And uh, the, the admonition was to them in verse number 2, if you've gotten there, it says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. Think about that. He said, For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Now this was the church that was in Sardis, but it represented a time in church history, and it represented all churches of all ages, because churches go through these situations where sometimes they get a lax, and they don't always do what the Bible teaches them to do. But he said, strengthen the things which remain. So I thought about some of the things that remain that probably really need strengthening in the average church today. And uh, I, I, I'm going to talk about them this morning. Uh, I, I wondered whenever I thought about this message, why do we need to strengthen things that remain? Why did we let them slip? And I think first of all, uh, many times it's because we're weary from working. You know, if you just work, 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 you know, and even though the Bible says uh, in uh, Galatians 6, 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Yes. But sometimes we just work and work and work and we're tired and we let things slip. Number two, sometimes we're weak from withstanding. Have you ever had to just stand up for Jesus and the whole world's uh, going a different direction? It's sort of like a fellow going the wrong way on the highway and he called his wife and he said, Honey, you'll never believe what's happening out here on the highway. He said, Everybody's going the wrong way but me. And so sometimes you just get tired of standing and, 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 and withstanding and you just say, You know what? I don't know whether I'm going to be able to keep this up or not because some people are going against the grain. Everything seems different than what I really believe and what I'm really teaching. And so I, I'm, I'm just real tired and weak from withstanding. Some then are worn out from warring. You know, if you, uh, you've heard of burnout, a lot of people get worn out from just warring, fighting the fight of faith. And uh, uh, 2 Timothy 2, 3, and 4 said, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And he said, No man that warreth entangleth himself 
with the affairs of this life that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. So I can understand why a lot of times we let things slack a little bit because of the situation which we're in at the time, but we never should let them slack because he said strengthen the things which remain lest they die. And uh, one of the things that I think that is needed, needing strengthened uh, today is that we need to have a definite conviction against sin. I think uh, the conviction that people have had over the years uh, that they've just kind of slipped a little bit and we've sort of given people a pass and we don't have that old-fashioned, I call it, conviction against sin like we used to. In fact, some people are actually saying they won't even mention sin anymore. They're not going to preach that anything's a sin. I've even had some people, they say, well, everybody knows what, is, what they're doing, what they're, that they're sinning. But, but a lot of people today have, the, the, the culture has gone away from God to such an extent that a lot of people are sinning and don't even know it. They don't know it and they don't believe that it's a sin. I don't see anything wrong with it. For instance, one time a, a boy and girl came to me and talked about getting married. And I said, well, yeah, I'll marry you. Uh, I was the pastor. I'll perform the ceremony. And they left. Everything was hunky-dory. And finally, uh, I got a call back from him. And uh, he said, uh, I forgot to tell you an important thing. And he said, my mama made me call you back. I said, well, what was it? He said, well, my girlfriend's uh, pregnant, <laughs> if that makes any difference. You know, but he said, we're not ashamed of it. Isn't that something? Back in the olden days when I was a kid, you'd have been ashamed of it. You'd have felt, oh my, what, what in the world have I done? And many times back in my day, it might have been harsh, but the girl was sent off to her aunt, you know, and stayed over there in uh, another city until the child was born. And I, I, I don't believe in di being discompassionate or dispassionate. Dis dispassionate. I do believe that sin is sin, uh, whether we will accept it or not. We need to have some. You know, there's three kinds of sin, and everybody needs to know this. And it's easy when you think about it. First of all, there's transgression. And, and think about transgression. Forgive us of our transgressions, the Bible says. And that's doing something you should not do. Doing something that you should not do. And he said in 1 John 3, 4, he said, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. In other words, doing something that you ought not to do. Whatever it is, uh, you know that it's not right, and so don't do it. It's a transgression. Number two, there's trespassing. Trespassing, you know. The Bible said, forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And that means going someplace where you ought not to go. Doing what you ought not to do, going where you ought not to go. And the, the fact is that the Bible says in Ephesians 2, 1, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. One time I was going to a meeting, uh, and I lived in Texas at the time, and was going from northwest of Fort Worth uh, to a meeting, and it was a kind of a bad cold spell, and ice was on the road, and uh, I was going to, I was driving to this meeting, and I come around a corner. I guess I was going a little too fast. And my car began to spin and all of a sudden went backwards through a fence. And uh, so there I was. And I looked over on the sign on the fence. It said, no trespassing. <laughs> and I, know, I said, well, I didn't have anything to do with it. I mean, I just said, let the wheel go. And I, and I finally had, I got, to, I got out of there and went to church. And I had a, 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 you know, a rancher there. And he said, well, I'll go and fix the fence so the cattle won't get out. And you go ahead and preach. So he did that for me. And I always I'm thankful for that. But then he put these no trespassing signs in my car, and and my license plate fell off too. And he put that in. I thank God because that been there. They'd known who done it. You know they'd come and got me. Maybe I said, well, it wasn't my fault. I was just spinning around. And I let her go. But trespassing is going where you ought not to go. 
There's certain places that Christians ought not to be caught dead in. You know what I mean? Stay away from those kind of places. Number three, and y'all know what this is, coming short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that is something that every one of us uh, know that we, that's being, listen to this, being somebody that we ought not to be. Being somebody that we ought not to be. Our preacher, whenever I was a, a young man, our preacher, he never got saved until he was pretty old, maybe 30, something like that, maybe more. He worked in the oil fields, and he drank a lot. And uh, one day he had a son named Donald Wayne, and he was about two years old, and he had come in drunk, and he was laying on the bed, and his wife, she got Donald Wayne, two years old, and put him up on the foot of the bed, and she said, Son, look, that's all you have for a daddy. That's all you have for a daddy. That broke his heart. Did you know he never drank anymore after that? He came to know Christ as his Savior upon the tower at the oil well, uh, at the oil company. He came to know Christ as his Savior. But can you imagine looking in the mirror and saying, I'm not happy with who I am. Being somebody that you said I ought not to be. We need to get an old-fashioned conviction against transgression and trespasses and being who we ought not to be, coming short of the glory of God. Every one of us needs to get our hearts right with God. Number two, compassion for the lost is about to die. I'll tell you, I remember when we, uh, and I know I'm an old fella now, and it's not as easy when you're, you know, going on 80-something. And, uh, but whenever I was a young pastor uh, and I had some associates that was working with me and we would go every day, every, you know, every weekday, Friday, Monday through Friday, we would go from one in the afternoon to at least four just knocking on doors and telling people about Jesus and how they could be saved if they just repented of their sins and asked Him to come into their heart. But there's not that compassion anymore. There's not that a wary concern anymore about lost souls out there that are dying without Christ and going to an eternity in hell. And you know God re- promised us if we would uh, go and witness that we wouldn't come back without, uh, you know, results. Remember, uh, my favorite verses, I guess, in the Bible that I would probably, if you asked me to autograph your Bible, I'd put this verse, these two verses in there. And that's uh, Psalms 126 five and six and here's what they say he that goeth forth no they that sow in tears shall reap in joy that's five they that sow in tears shall reap in joy and then verse six he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again bringing his sheaves with him see we've got the promise there if we were witness we will we will bring back sheaves people that represents people that have come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and we need to know this for a fact people are still dying and they're dying without Christ and they will not know how to be saved unless somebody that knows how to be saved tells them about Jesus Christ and witnesses to them and do does what they can to win them to Christ we don't do that like we used to no it used to it it was uh, it was something that we had a real desire something happened and it was probably a good thing uh, a few years ago it's maybe about 40 years ago but it was a good thing when uh, but it, it, it took away the best thing and, and before that preachers were emphasizing the second coming of Christ and getting folks saved and then what we after after that period of time we thought about making this a better place to live making the earth a better place to live and then the study of the word of god and we you know i'll tell you what it doesn't make much difference how much bible you know if you're lost somebody's got to tell the lost 
that they need to be saved. Amen. And we've got to be the ones to do it because we're the only ones that will. Nobody else is going to do it if we don't because we're the ones that know how to win people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Another thing that's about to die is concern for the church. Now, we have a little better uh, situation here than most people, but did you know there's a lot of people that really don't have any concern for the church. You'd be surprised. Well, I can serve the Lord, they said, on the creek bank as easy as I can in church. Or I can watch a uh, preacher on TV as easy as I can in church. Or I can find a preacher on uh, Facebook as easy as I can be in church. But I guarantee you something. There's nothing as good as being in the church and fellowshipping and being able to look at the preacher and feel his emotion and his spirit and for him to feel your spirit as he's preaching the word of God and you're listening to the word of God. You cannot beat that. So we ought to say let's become more concerned about church and, uh, and do those things that we ought to do. Now I know sometimes you get weary and sometimes you say, oh no, it's time for church again. Now, I'm not that way because the most important thing and I'm not bragging, I'm just telling you, I may not have much of a life, but I'm going to tell you right now, going to church is one of those things that's a blessing to me. Right. I can't even tell time without going to church. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> From Sunday to Sunday and Wednesday night, come and get that shot in the arm, so to speak, right. well, when you're just motivated to go out there and stay with the stuff right. and endure till next Sunday. Christians uh, need to worship and want to worship with no strings attached. Wouldn't that be something? We, we, can, we can just work. He said, wherefore, listen to this, I want to read you this scripture. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Listen to this. Who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. Listen, we need to come and we need to worship the Lord. Lay aside all the weights and all the sins that beset you, whatever they might be, and just say, I'm free today to serve the Lord. You can come in that back door back there and say, you know, Lord, cleanse me and forgive me from all, for all of my sins, you know and make me whole and clean in your sight and let me worship you with my whole heart and with my pure heart and with a heart of love. Right. And that's what we need to do. Good. And this is the last one, but I'm going to tell you something. There's not as much concern for the old-fashioned home life as there used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I know I'm old, I'm old, you know, and so we know this. <clears throat> I have to tell you that. And so you'll know I want to go back to the wonderful days of old. You know, my mother was a stay-at-home mom, and she had 11 kids, you know. And so most we had, I think, as many as eight at home at the same time. But my mother would always get up, and she'd cook breakfast, seemed like. And she, do you remember some of y'all that are kind of old? Do y'all remember, boy, when the house always smelled so good yeah. because something yeah. was cooking? Yeah. Oh, man, that was great. You know, and my wife, sometimes she'll make a stew if it's going to be a kind of a cold night. And boy, that stew's cooking. You go in there and ooh, you can even lift the lid, you know, and boy, I mean, it's, it's heaven on earth. You know, you can tell I love to eat. But my mother, you know, a lot of people say, well, how come you're so fat for a sharp man? And I said, well, <laughs> I said, because of my, of my mama, that's who. Uh, you know, my mother was the type of woman that when we come in from school, she had a snack for us. Well, well, then she cooked supper every night, which my wife does too, but this, my mother did that. And then uh, she'd always say this, this is why I have trouble with weight, because I still do this. I remember mama, you know. And uh, she said, I don't want any of you kids to go to bed hungry. You get you a snack before you go to bed. <laughs> that's a good mom, ain't it? So anyway, that's what I remember. I remember mom and daddy sitting at the table. Now, my dad was kind of quiet, you know, and my brothers and sisters are listening. They know this is the truth. And my mother would say the blessing 
Now, she's kind of the leader of our family, you know, until I got grown and I started leading it. But she, um, I wasn't grown, I was 12, you know. But she would always lead it. I'll tell you what my mother was. She, she always said the blessing. My mother said the blessing. She's a spiritual leader in our home. Now, that's just the truth. My dad was saved, but he was real quiet. I didn't take after him, you know what I mean? But he was real <laughs> quiet. I'll take after my mama, I guess. But anyway, she said the blessing so fast, really and truly what she said. Uh, she'd say, thank you for the food in Jesus' name, amen, or something. And um, she'd say, she would say, uh, thank, you, uh, thank you for the day. Uh, and, and we always thought she was saying, thank you for the gravy. She said, thank you for the day. We, thank you for the day we, and we said, I thought she was saying, thank you for the gravy, because, you know, if it hadn't been for gravy, we probably wouldn't have lived, you know. And, uh, uh, we had plenty of gravy. But she prayed those prayers, and we'd always say, Mama, can I lead in prayer? And she said, boy, I got some spiritual kids here. We was having fried chicken. And uh, we had her, so I was going to pray. I was a little kid going to pray. And, uh, and, I, and I had prayed with one eye open because I was looking at that chicken. And I had my fork ready, and I knew when the amen was coming. Whoop, I hit that breast right there. And I got that first breast. Boy, I'm telling you, it was good. I don't think the Lord heard that prayer. <laughs> but anyway, I did get the chicken breast. You know what I mean? My mother always, she said, well, I, I like the back and the neck. Can you imagine that? I like the back and the neck. I think she wanted us kids to have the best part of the chicken. I don't like the back, and I don't like the neck. I'll take the... I'll take a leg. <laughs> I like that one. Woo. Hey, old-fashioned home life is about to die. Most of the time, we don't even eat together anymore. Most of the time, uh, we, 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 we don't think about these things. It's always nice, even if there's just two of you. Of course, some of you just one of you, bless your heart. But if there's at least two, if you can just sit down together and have a meal, it's a blessing. Amen. You can say the blessing That's right. and have a meal. It doesn't have to be great. But wouldn't that be good? Wouldn't it be good if the father was a spiritual leader in the home? Yes. And if the mother followed the father? Yes. And if the kids obeyed their parents? Yes. And wouldn't it be good when the kids grew up and become 18 or better that they honored their parents? Yeah. That's what the Bible said. Honor thy mother and daddy that your life may be long. Yeah, you obey them. Obey, them, obey your parents, of course, but then when you get to where you don't have to obey them, you, have to, you need to honor them then. Right. Honor them. Yeah, I'm old enough now. My kids will call me and I'll say, well, what'd you call for? They say, well, you won't be here too much longer, and I thought I'd talk to you <laughs> for a little while. <laughs> oh, Lord. And that's probably true, but yeah. they, at least they call me. Yeah, amen. And my daughter, she comes over every... Uh, every Tuesday see how we're doing and we're doing fine but she said I, I don't want to miss coming over here and I'll not get to ever see you again wouldn't that be a horrible thought put your family first yeah. put your family first right. and love your family because right. I'm going to tell you right now uh, and I know some of you your family situation is horrible and I, I'm not going to criticize anybody, but I'm going to tell you when you've got a nice family situation, make the best of it. Amen. Love your family. Right. Love your grandma. Love your right. grandpa. Love your great grandma and great grandpa. Wow. Yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. Old fashioned family life is just about gone. Just about gone. We need to get back to it. Right. We need some men that will be spiritual. Right. We need some women that will follow their husbands. Mm -hmm. And we need some children that will obey their parents. Yes. We need some mothers and daddies that will love their children mm -hmm. more than they love sin. Woo, that's right. Old-fashioned, I call it. Because it's a little old-fashioned nowadays. But the Bible tells us to strengthen the things that remain, lest they die. Let's pray.